What is going on guys? Today, we're getting a bit real. So you know what? Let me get a little closer to the camera. Let me get up close and personal with you guys. There we go. That's a bit better. So if there's one food that's so easy for me to overeat and that tastes so good to me, it is peanut butter. I love peanut butter. I, I can't even start to tell you guys how much I like peanut butter. Back in the day when I was fat, I would open this jar up. I would take a spoon, eat it, go put the spoon in the dishwasher. Then I'll come back, take another spoon, have one more spoonful, go put that spoon in the dishwasher. And then three, four, five, six spoonfuls later, I get satisfied and I just ate a thousand calories of peanut butter and I wasn't binge eating. I just had no idea what calories were. I had no idea about nutrition. I had no idea how calorie dense peanut butter is. It just tasted so good to me that after I would have a meal, my dessert was just eating spoonfuls of peanut butter. That sweetness that I desire after eating a meal would come from literally eating peanut butter. And it wasn't this peanut butter, this. This is your all natural, your natty peanut butter with just peanuts and salt. What I would actually be eating was, let me show you guys. I would be having things like Smart Balance. Thought it was a Smart Balance, it's not. It's literally peanuts, salt, and then a bunch of sugar to make it even more craveable and even more desirable. It didn't stop there. That's not just the only nut butter I was having. I was having things like cookie dough flavored peanut butter. If it can get much better than this, it can. Nutella. If I was in the mood for some chocolate, well, peanut butter jar, you can weigh it on the side. I would just have spoonfuls of Nutella and when you take the hazelnuts out, when you take the peanuts out and you just toss in cookies instead, you get something like Biscoff. Stuff smacked, it tastes so good. I would just have as much as I wanted, whenever I wanted. And I mean, life was good, right? Until I was 220 pounds and I realized, what is happening to me? Why am I gaining so much weight? These did not help. When I understood what it takes to actually be in a calorie deficit and lose weight, it was easy. Just stop eating peanut butter, switch it with powdered peanut butter, it is half or a third of the calories. It tastes pretty good, tastes like peanuts. You mix it with some water, maybe some almond milk, and you get a peanut butter-like consistency. It was satisfying my love for peanut butter. And this is all I had for the past three years, at least two years, I never touched peanut butter. I forgot what peanut butter tasted like pretty much because all I would have was PB Fit, PB2, all kinds of powdered peanut butters, and it was good enough for me. But the thing is, the problem with that is, for me, it started with peanut butter. I stopped eating peanut butter, started having powdered nut butter. Then after that, it became eggs. So I just stopped eating whole eggs and I would just eat egg whites. And then slowly I started to realize I'm missing a lot of fat from my diet. And I don't want to be eating 20 grams of fat a day. I want to be having nutritious whole eggs. I want to be having real peanut butter and just a few months ago, I made the change back to the dark side. I put down the powdered peanut butter, put it down for like a meal because I still have this stuff a lot and this stuff tastes amazing. But I went back to real peanut butter and oh my God, anyone who tells you that powdered peanut butter tastes like peanut butter. Okay. Taste is different. Yes. These both taste like peanuts, but the same mouthfeel you get of regular peanut butter. What kind of experience am I describing the mouthfeel peanut butter? Okay, peanut butter is special. It has a special place in my heart, okay? This stuff, the fat just coats your tongue, it coats your mouth, it tastes so good. It is delicious, and you guys probably already knew that, but if you haven't been having peanut butter, if you're someone who has made the switch to powdered nut butter, that is a great switch. I'm not gonna knock it. I did it for years, and I'm gonna continue to do it, but this stuff, real peanut butter remains on top. It is so delicious, but the problem is still there. It is really calorie dense. This stuff is so craveable. It tastes so good, and you have bodybuilders prepping for competition eating chicken, broccoli, oatmeal, and egg whites, and they still don't have peanut butter. Instead, they have almond butter because almond butter is a lot less craveable and it does not taste as good as peanut butter. And so I'm here to change that for you guys. I'm here to help you guys have real peanut butter to get your healthy fats in. I used to hate that word, healthy fats. Like I was like, fat is fat, like healthy fats. I don't want to be fat. I cut out all nut butters, all whole eggs, all nuts, avocados, all that was out of my diet for the longest time. And they are back. Food tastes a lot better with them in it. Yes, it is a lot of calories, but it does make me feel better. And I just adjust my calories overall. I eat a little bit less carbs, eat a little less protein, have a little room for this. But the problem is this stuff is calorie dense. And people just say portion control, like just have a little bit of peanut butter and it's no big deal. You get your healthy fats and you get your calories and you get that satisfying taste of peanut butter. Just have a little bit, it's no big deal. Well, this is what I have to say for that. This is 200 calories of peanut butter, this. That is one bite of peanut butter for me. A big bite, but one bite. If I don't want 200 calories, let's say I want half a serving of peanut butter, half of that portion control, one spoonful, what am I, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna eat that one bite and I'm gonna get hungrier. 
That's not the goal. The goal is to satisfy your peanut butter craving, not to make you crave peanut butter even more. If I take one bite of that, I'm gonna want more peanut butter. Six more bites and then I'll be satisfied. So how do we have peanut butter on a diet? Well, one option, powdered peanut butter. Amazing option, tastes amazing, but it's not the same. I know that's not what you wanna hear. That is exactly what I did not wanna hear for the past few years. Anytime anyone said anything about real peanut butter, I was like, nope. I don't wanna hear it. Powdered nuts taste just as good, if not better. Don't talk to me about real peanut butter. Real peanut butter is the devil. I don't wanna hear it. Get it away from me, stay away from me. So how do we have peanut butter on a diet? Well, the thing is you wanna volumize it. So instead of making that peanut butter one bite, you wanna get that same peanut butter taste in a lot more volume. So one way to do that, powdered peanut butter. But another way to do that is more voluminous foods and mix it in with peanut butter. And the thing is we can do that with more fat. Fat is calorie dense. Oil, butter, egg yolks, not that big for a lot of calories, but carbs and protein, those things can be voluminous, 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 voluminous. So that's what we're going to do today. What I'm going to share with you guys today is the best way I've found to make peanut butter super voluminous. So you get that peanut buttery taste. You get to eat real peanut butter instead of powdered peanut butter, even though you could completely use powdered peanut butter if you want to, but you get that deliciousness. You get that fattiness from the peanut butter that just tastes so good, but you get to have more than one bite, which is the frustrating part. So let's get into the recipe and let's have more than one bite of peanut butter. So one of the most voluminous foods that I know of are egg whites. And when you whip them up and get them fluffy that is the best way to add the most amount of volume to them and egg whites are also filling and they're just protein there's nothing else in them it's just a bunch of protein no carbs no fat so what we do is i have three eggs cracked in a bowl here why did i do this off camera let's just say i'm not the best at cracking eggs so i have three eggs cracked them took the yolks they're gone we're gonna whip these up we're gonna mix in the peanut butter and we're gonna make some meringue cookies they're gonna be so delicious and they're gonna satisfy that peanut butter craving by giving you the most amount of bites the most amount of volume with the peanut buttery taste that you want and that is how you eat peanut butter on a diet so to whip these up take these egg whites and whip them i have cream of tartar here do you need this no you don't they will whip up perfectly fine i made this recipe without cream of tartar you don't need them but i give a little sprinkle right on the egg whites just because this is acidic so like just like lemon juice acidic this is acidic but in powdered form and it helps the egg whites whip up and stay whipped up easier but you don't need it if you don't have it it's no big deal if you want the sickest forearm pump of your life if you want the sickest forearm pump of your life then you can whip this by hand but trust me it will hurt it will take you forever so just use one of these which if you see the bottom of this there's just pink splatter all over it. I can clean the whisks by throwing it in the dishwasher, but I can't just throw this electrical appliance in the dishwasher. And then I just don't clean it. I just put it back in the cabinet and now it looks gross. The reason there's pink spots all over it is because my last video, I made marshmallows. I've been loving those marshmallows so much that I made more marshmallows and more marshmallows and more marshmallows. And the last batch I made had a little bit of red food coloring in it. And this is what they look like. As you can see, most of them are gone because every time I open the fridge, I see these and I snack on them, but they're like barely any calories and they're sweet and they're delicious. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. But red food coloring makes them look real nice and pretty like this. You never saw anything. And that is why there's pink splatter on this. So first thing you're gonna do is preheat your oven 200 degrees Fahrenheit and the Celsius temperature for that, stay tuned. One day I'll know the conversion, but that day is not today. 200 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna start whipping this up and once they're stiff peaks, I will show you what it looks like and I'll show you the next steps. Since I had an electric whisker, mixer, beater, it only took a few minutes. Peaks are stiff, peaks are hard. So, whoa, no, they're not hard. They're just stiff, okay? They're soft, stiff peaks. You're gonna need a one-to-one -one sugar replacement sweetener. I have erythritol. I'll leave the link down below. It's my favorite sweetener, Lacanto monk fruit sweetener, but you guys know the deal. It's the same thing I always use in every single video to sweeten stuff. I have 50 grams. You're gonna need anywhere from 50 grams to 80 grams, depending on how sweet you like things. So if you like things really sweet, use more. Take your sweetener and sprinkle it all over your egg whites. And then give it another whip. Sweet fluffy clouds. You know they're whipped up enough when you can do that and it doesn't fall. The peaks are now stiff and sweet. So this is when 
your nut butter goes in. You can use whatever you like, Nutella, peanut butter, any super calorie dense nut butter works perfect. The point of this video is eating peanut butter on diet. I'm gonna use peanut butter and I love peanut butter. I'm gonna use 20 grams of this stuff. That is 120 calories and it is 10 grams of fat. That's too much, so sad. Still too much, let me let a little more drip. There we go, 20 grams. Take this and just drizzle it on your egg whites like this. Lines everywhere. And if you have the calories for more peanut butter, feel free to use more. The more you use, the more delicious it's gonna be, but 20 grams is all I wanna use for this. So I'm gonna get the last bit off with my finger and you don't have to ask a question. This is getting licked clean. That stickiness, I like it. I'm in heaven right now. Back to the video. So, you got your peanut butter drizzled on your egg whites like this. Your egg whites are, they almost fell, geez. Your egg whites are soft, fluffy, sweet. You got your peanut butter drizzled and now you're gonna beat it one more time. The whole thing is a light brown color and there's little tiny dots of peanut butter everywhere. Little tiny specks of peanut butter, which is exactly what I want. You can add vanilla extract to this and make them more delicious. But the thing is, if you're like me and you haven't had real peanut butter for so long, you appreciate the taste of real peanut butter so much. And I like to just let the peanut butter flavor completely shine and I don't want any other flavors in this. I don't want any vanilla extract. I don't want anything else. So I'm gonna leave it like this. When you don't have someone helping you in the kitchen, hold down parchment paper and it keeps rolling up. The clips that go on your fridge come into action. So I'm gonna just make dollops of this. You can make them small, you can make them big. Take a spoonful. Put it down. Yes, you can put this in a piping bag and pipe it. I thought about doing that for the video, but I wanted to make this realistic. I want to make this very relatable to you guys. Are you guys going to want to pipe things and make things look perfectly? I don't think so. And so I'm going to keep it real with you guys. This is how I eat them and this is how I like them. I'm not going to make it special for the thumbnail, so please click on the video. Well, actually, if you're watching this, you already did, so thank you. 35 meringue cookies on here. Sweet, fluffy peanut butter clouds, but these are going to turn into cookies. They're going to get hard. They're going to get crispy. They're going to get crunchy. Pop these in the oven, 200 degrees. For me, it takes me one and a half hours. It might take you a little longer. It might take you a little less time, but I'll show you how you can tell when they're done. These are done. And there we go. Those are a lot of meringues. So you can tell that they're done because you can lift it off the parchment and it is a little bit crispy. That's how you know they're done. So this time it took me an hour, 44 minutes exactly to the dot, not 45. 44. Do not eat them right now. Let them cool. Just trust me, let them cool. If you take a bite right now and you don't let them cool, you're gonna be like, this idiot in the YouTube video told me it was gonna be cookies in their bread. Like they're gonna taste like straight bread. They're not gonna be crispy. They're not gonna be crunchy. So leave them and let them cool for 20 minutes. I know it's gonna be hard, but there's a lot of things you can do in 20 minutes and I'm gonna leave it up to your imagination. Remember what I said? You can do a lot in those 20 minutes. Well, guess what I did? I made some coffee. Hot. What goes better with cookies and coffee? Santa might disagree and say milk, but I say coffee. Let's try these. Look at that. That is one meringue and we have 34 more. Literally just melts in your mouth. The more you bake these, the crispier they get. If you want these super crispy, bake them for two hours and they will get really, really crispy. These are so good. When you don't make these the same size, the best part is the smaller ones get extra crispy. The larger ones stay a little less crispy. You get the best of both worlds. Every cookie is a little bit different. And so the flavor might be the same, but the texture is changing and it is taking your taste buds on a wild ride. Super set with coffee and just go back and forth, back and forth, baby. Small and crispy. They're just, they're good. That's the bottom. That's the top. That's the inside. I've never done this before, but let's see how it goes. A little coffee dip. Ooh, okay. It's like dipping a biscuit in some hot tea. Have you guys done that before? I have. This is the best way I have found to eat peanut butter on a diet. It's to volumize the life out of it and get as much as you can while keeping that peanut buttery taste and getting that healthiness in from the peanut butter. You don't need teeth to eat these. So if you have dentures or if you know someone that has dentures, give them this, press it with your tongue and you can eat it like that. It's 
See, no teeth, no teeth needed. Sometimes teeth just get in the way. And now you can sit down, eat a tray full of cookies instead of one bite of peanut butter. So like anyone who says portion control, sorry, I do not have that. And also comment down below your favorite spread, your favorite nut butter. Is it peanut butter? Is it almond butter? Is it cashew butter? Is it Nutella? Is it Biscoff biscuit butter? Let me know down below. Mine is for sure peanut butter and I am team chunky or team creamy. Both get equal love. I literally do not have a preference. I like both a lot. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Marshmallow, cookie. That combo smacks.